Good afternoon. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Wednesday. So I'm here in my kitchen and I'm going to make some quesadilla snacks. It's kind of one of the things on our list of favorites. So I have like an old quesadilla maker I've had for a lot of years. We got one year for Christmas and we have made a ton of quesadillas in this. But I thought I would make some with a little bit of twist tonight. I don't know if y'all have ever had Taco Bell's quesadillas, but they have like a little spicy sauce in them. And I was kind of wanting to replicate that. So I found some actually some recipes online that said like copycat recipes. So one of them called for sour cream, which I don't have. And this one just calls for mayo and a couple other, well, some other ingredients, a lot of herbs and spices and stuff. So I'm going to try to make it. Now I'm going to go easy on the jalapenos because we don't like super spicy stuff. And I don't know how many servings this makes. Alright, so I think I'm going to try just a little bite of it. If it's too strong, I'm not even going to put these peppers in here and I may add a little bit more mayo just to kind of dilute it a little bit because it does look strong. That really has a similar taste, yes. Now I grinded my chicken up in my blender. I have a meat grinder, so I do that sometimes. And I think that'll be perfect for this because I can just kind of mix it in really good. Now I love to make bread and anything that I can do with dough. And I've made homemade quesadilla shells before. And let me tell you, they are a billion times better than the ones you can get from the grocery store. So these have been a total success. The only thing that I'll do differently next time is make a double or triple run of that so I can put a lot more of the sauce in there because there just wasn't enough. All right, so I gotta head out of here. I gotta go to choir practice. We're doing like a little quartet singing on Sunday and I've gotta be down there. It feels like it's nine o'clock and it's just 5.03. Look at that, look how dark it is outside. I don't know who likes the time change. I've not met one person that does. Yeah. Victim number two. <laughs> Down for the count. So I'm back in the kitchen again. Day two of quesadillas. Like I said last night, I didn't make enough of that sauce to put inside of them, the copycat Taco Bell sauce. So I'm gonna make a good amount this time. And after I get my chicken grinded up, I'm just gonna go ahead and mix it all in the meat. So I'll know I've got a lot of it in there. Also, I have something else I'm gonna make. Probably tomorrow. But I'd like to start it in the morning because it's probably going to be a process. So who out there likes these? These are seasonal. They're kind of hard to find any other time of year. And there's also another dilemma regarding these. We don't ever buy these because they have peanut products in it. And Seth has a severe, severe, super severe allergy to nuts. So he's never got to have one. So I found a recipe online, a homemade recipe, that looked pretty good. Now I don't know how they taste, but I'm going to try it and we're going to see if they're very similar. Seth will have nothing to compare it to, but we will. And if they're good, I don't know, maybe I could make them throughout the year. Molly just got back from her walk and she's in her little sun spot. This is one of her favorite spots in the kitchen. All right, so this time I'm just gonna add in the sauce directly to the meat. It is a very warm November day. I think we're at 70 today. Y'all, I got a surprise the other day from the chicken coop. A new layer, one of my Coach and Bantams have started laying and it was just a super tiny little egg. And I'm gonna go down there and see if any of the others have started laying and I'll take my camera and we'll go look at the chickens. 
I don't think I'm going to get a little bit of grass for the chickens. They'll appreciate that. I found a little patch out here. Sometimes I do in the winter time. Well, it's not really winter. It's still fall, but I call it winter because the time's changed and it's just dark and dreary at like 5 o'clock. So, technically winter in my opinion now. Betty, you're always trying to get the most attention. You and Polly. All right, let's see what's in here. Oh, oh, I see little eggs. Those are my new ones. I'll see how tiny they are. Yeah, it looks like I've just got coaching eggs right now. Y'all slackers. So here's the size comparison. They're quite a bit smaller and the first time they lay the eggs are also small too. They will get a little bit bigger as time goes on. So sometimes when I'm baking with them I'll use two for one. But yeah, they're pretty cute little eggs. Good morning. Hope you guys are having a great Friday. So I'm here today in the kitchen again. And I thought I would practice on these little Debbie Christmas tree cakes. It is morning time and I'll have plenty of time to do them. The first thing I'll have to do is make the cakes. And it's not with the recipe that's on the back of the cake mix. You've got to kind of make them thinner. And I've got to put them in two pans. So I'm going to try glass pans on the video. It wasn't glass pans, so I hope they'll do okay. But that is my first step that I'm going to do. And I thought about waiting until next week and doing these for like Thanksgiving, but what if they're not good? So I thought, well, I'm gonna try them first and we'll see if they're good. And then if they are, maybe I'll make them again next week. This recipe has got a lot of butter, a lot of shortening. I'm sure it's really healthy. Most things that taste wonderful though, aren't always super healthy. We'll eat it in moderation. Oh my. <laughs> Cheers. All right, so I'm gathering my ingredients. Now, as far as this recipe goes, it calls for vanilla cake, and it has its own recipe for that. It's not from a box, so you may be able to substitute with that. I'm gonna try it first, just from the recipe, making my own cake mix. And then, maybe at a later date, I'll try it with actual cake mix and see if it tastes the same and it's easier, but this is how I'm starting out. Working on the cakes. Trying to perfect the icing in the middle. My husband says it's close. All right, so I've come to a stopping point. I got my icing made, got the two cakes cooling, but I don't have any cookie cutouts, so Eli went to get me some. And then when he gets back, I'm gonna cut these out, put this together, and then I'm gonna work on the topping icing, which is like shortening and white chocolate melted together. And then I'll have to color some frosting to have that red little line going through it. So that's next on the list. Oh, y'all, they don't look wonderful. And I'll tell you why. Because I didn't use the proper pans that were in the lady's recipe. She used larger cake pans that made the batter thinner. So for one thing, the batter was too thick and it was kind of hard to get out of there pretty. And it was really too thick for the cookie cutters. So... They look 
So this is the latest experiment. I decided to just use one layer of the cake and then I put the icing that goes in the middle of the filling and then I topped it off with the white chocolate coating so it's hardened on there. So it looks better than the other thing I had going earlier. 